Papa, good evening, Mama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your two hands above your head and put them together with a joyful shout. Let's welcome our Papa, Dr. Abel Damina. Glory. Whoa. Amen. Father, thank you for grace and mercy and thank you for access into the deep things of God by the Holy Ghost. And we rejoice that tonight we walk in the light even as the word comes forth with clarity. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Your people are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. Nobody lives here the same way they came. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. It's 30 days of glory 2022. Glory. We well, want to welcome everybody connected to the service tonight by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the social media community, brothers and sisters online. We love you. We're glad to have all of you in the service tonight. You're going to help us get the videos around the world. Make sure you subscribe, like, share the videos, and don't forget the hashtags for the 30 days of glory. Let's get this word to the ends of the earth. And all the audience, all our radio audience in Aquaibom State, we want to welcome you to the service, guys. Call a friend, a loved one. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. All our campuses around the world, we want to welcome all of you brothers and all the citizens. We're glad to have all of you in the service tonight. Are we excited to share fellowship together tonight? Can we celebrate our fellowship with a shout? <laughs> Glory! Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word of his grace. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Once again, don't forget to share the videos. Don't forget to tag some people. Don't forget to like the video. And don't also forget to subscribe so that the people within your influence can also have access to the things we're teaching tonight. We're still examining the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19. 2 Corinthians 1, 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not ye and nay, but in him was ye. Next verse. For all the promises of God in him are ye and in him. Amen unto the glory of God by us. Next verse. He now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Next verse. Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. That word the earnest of the spirit in our hearts is a guarantee or the proof of the spirit. The guarantee or the proof. Another translation calls it the down payment of the spirit in our hearts. Romans chapter 15 verse number 18. See the way brother Paul communicated those thoughts to the church at Rome. 15 verse, verse 8 sorry. Romans 15 verse 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision. For the truth of God. To confirm the promises made unto the father so jesus is a confirmation the fulfillment of all the promises that god made to the fathers so we are going to see one of those promises in ezekiel 36 now please take down this a promise is something that god himself will fulfill a promise is something that god will fulfill by himself a promise is not a commandment. A commandment is an instruction. 
But in a promise is what I will do. What I will do. In the Greek is that word promise is you have the where you have the word epagelia. Epagelian. It means a commitment to do something. It's not an agreement. It's a commitment. A commitment to do something. Or an oath. Something you said you will do. So God gives a promise. A self-fulfilling promise. In Ezekiel 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. That's a self-fulfilling promise. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. That's what he will do. He said, I will do this. That's a promise. I will put my spirit within you. That's the promise. Look at verse 27 of Ezekiel 36, 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. You shall keep my judgments and do them. So his promise here involves even our actions. I will cause you to walk in my statutes. The promise of God involves our actions. That is Part of what God will do is to enable us to do right. Part of what God will do is to cause us to do what is right. Part of what God has promised to do, he has promised to make us do the right things. He said, I will give you my spirit and I will cause you to walk in my statues. There is another one of that promise in Jeremiah 31, 33. Jeremiah 31 verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, say of the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And I will, I will, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. Pay attention to it. Look at that word. I will put my law in their inward parts. My law, not my laws. My law, singular, not plural. He was not saying, I put the Ten Commandments. No. It's law not laws which means i will put my principle or i will put my way of living i will put my principle into your heart or i will put my way of living into your hearts please pay attention in second corinthians chapter 3 verse 3 second corinthians chapter 3 verse 3 for as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart, written by the spirit of the living God in fleshly tables of the heart. He says it's written. That is, this is ministered the epistle of Christ or my teaching, God's teaching. So when he says law, he is referring to a teaching, a teaching or a principle or a manner of living. A teaching or a principle or a manner of living. I will put my law in their hearts. So in Hebrews chapter 8, we see the fulfillment of that promise. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10. Mm -mm. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. 
I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Next verse. They shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Wow. I will write it in their hearts. So he said, because of what I will write, they shall know me from the least to the greatest. I will put my laws. He's not saying we should follow laws. Mm -mm. That is, there is a consciousness that will be given to a man that is born again. There is a consciousness that will be given to a man that is born again. In Christ, we have the knowledge of righteousness. In Christ, we have the knowledge of righteousness. In the law, if you read the law, he says, the law says, thou shalt not do this. The law says, thou shalt not covet then the Bible says the law is the knowledge of sin. Notice that when the law was given, they knew about covetousness. They knew about idolatry. They knew about bearing false witness. Because that was the intent of the law of Moses to pronounce everyone a sinner and to shut every man's mouth. John 1 17 tells us for the law was given by Moses but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The law was given by Moses. So he says now when I put my law not laws laws given by Moses my own law in their hearts the mission of my law in their heart is that they shall know me. The consciousness that I will plant, the teaching that I will put, the principle, my way of living that I will put in their hearts will unveil my knowledge to them. They shall know me. So, when the law is written in our hearts, it gives us a righteousness consciousness and not a sin consciousness. When the law is written in our hearts by the spirit of the living God, it gives us a righteousness consciousness and not a sin consciousness. Notice, when the law is given, they know sin because sin is imputed. Romans chapter 5 verse 13. Until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. So it is the giving of the law that brought the imputation of sin. First Corinthians 15, the strength of sin is the law. So here, he is saying, when I put my own law, not the law of Moses, my own law, he didn't say when I put the law. He said when I put my. The law. My law. I will write my law. By the law. Is the knowledge of sin. I'm not going to write the law. In your hearts. I will write my law. In your hearts. Please take note of the difference. He says. When I put my law. In your heart, you shall know me. He isn't referring to the laws of sin. He's referring to the knowledge of righteousness that comes into a man that is born again. <laughs> Remember the way brother Paul put it in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and 
also to the Greek. For therein, that's the next verse, is the righteousness. So, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith in the gospel of Christ. Which is the power of God to salvation. So, the gospel of Christ is the revelation of God's righteousness. The revelation of God's gift of righteousness. The revelation of God's gift of righteousness. Please stay with me. Listen to this. A believer does not need to be told about love for him to know about love. A believer does not need to be told about love for him to know about love. When we tell you about love is to remind you of what you already know because you are in Christ is to bring to your remembrance or to bring to your acknowledgement or to bring to your consciousness what you already know because you are already in Christ. Remember Hebrews chapter 8 verse 11. He says, oh put it up brother. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 11. <clears throat> he, sorry, Hebrews 8 11. Yes, put it up on my screen. <clears throat> he said, they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. I don't need to be told to know the Lord. It's inherent. It's inherent. That's what he meant by, I will write my laws in their hearts. It's inherent in the believer. The law of God. Righteousness by faith. Love. Joy. Peace. Gentleness. Meekness. Goodness. Temperance. Is inherent in the believer. For they shall know me. Say with me very loud, I know him. They shall know me from the least to the greatest. So believers, James said something. He says, when you hear the word, you are looking into the mirror. So that the mirror shows you who you are. So the mirror shows you who you are. A preacher said, we no longer preach holiness. And I said to him, what do you mean? He said, we should be preaching about sin. I told him, that's not the gospel. <laughs> you preach about the cure to sin. You don't preach sin. That's not good news. That's not the gospel. You preach the cure to sin. He said, yes. Then he asked me, what's the cure? I said, what Jesus Christ has done is what you preach. What Jesus Christ has done. He has defeated sin. He has defeated death. And now faith in Christ makes you the righteousness of God. We are sin no longer has dominion over you. So we preach what Christ has already done. He said, how do people then live right? People will live right when you show them what Jesus has done. You know, many people don't believe in that simple statement. People will live right when you show them what Jesus has done. Now, a religious mind thinks that statement is too weak to make anybody live right. Because the mission of religion is to downplay what Jesus has done and overplay what man can do which is filthy before God. How do people live right? Show them what Christ has done. Put the mirror in their face so that they become men before the mirror. And as you keep looking at the mirror, the mirror drives the consciousness of your identity into your mind. So Paul letters are full of realities of identity. Brother Paul's writings, they are full of realities of identity. Paul will give you substance in what Christ has done. Brother Paul's letters will give you substance in what Christ 
has done. Then the instructions are easily passed across. In fact, cheaply passed across. If you give a man instructions to live right, without first of all showing him he has been made right, you are not preaching the gospel. If you give a man instructions, live right, live right, live right, without first of all showing him that he has been made right with God, that is the ability on which you live right. You are not preaching the gospel. Because he says, I will write my laws in their hearts so that they will know me from the least to the greatest. Someone said, we need the church to begin to talk very loud on homosexuality and gay. Well, homosexuality is a sin. It's a walk of the flesh. It's a walk of the flesh. Homosexuality is sinful. I mean, sinful living. There's no doubt about it. But we, we won't inform more people about it. We will not make it popular. And we will not advertise it because that's not our mandate to advertise homosexuality. What did Paul say? When brother Paul mentioned homosexuality, I am aware though that there are, you know, some strange fellows who have entered the church saying that the Bible doesn't condemn homosexuality. Some people even said that the Bible didn't mention homosexuality. But I'm aware that the word homosexuality emerged in dictionaries 1862. The word homosexuality emerged in dictionaries 1862. And so they want to be funny with that. So they say, if there was no homosexuality as a word before Paul wrote, where do we get homosexuality as a sin? That's mischief. Brother Paul mentioned 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 8. Because even in this service now, there may be some homosexuals. And online and on radio. And those of you watching on TV. Because they don't write it in people's foreheads. There may be some brothers molesting brothers and telling them to keep quiet and intimidating them. And if you are doing that, you better stop and look in the mirror and see that that's not who you are. Some people say, I was born like that. No, 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 no. Nobody was born like that. You were born with a male organ. That already tells you are a man. Men don't sleep with men. Women don't sleep with women. See, I hear. Yes. It's even disgusting to think about the idea. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 8. <clears throat> Nay, you do wrong and defraud... And that your brethren. Verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Give me amplified of that particular verse. Amplified. Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the amplified? I did it on the bigger screen, amplified version. Do you not know that the righteous, the unrighteous and the wrongdoers will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived or misled. Neither the impure and immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor those who participate in homosexuality. Those who participate in homosexuality. Put the next verse. Next verse. 
nor cheats, swindlers, and thieves, nor greedy graspers, nor drunkards, nor foul-mouthed revilers, and slanderers, nor extortioners, and robbers will inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. Now, after telling them that this class of people cannot inherit the kingdom, means they are not born again. He now said in the next verse, oh, I love the next verse. Next verse, verse 11. And such some of you were. And such some of you were once. But you were washed clean, purified by a complete atonement for sin, and made free from the guilt of sin. And you were consecrated, set apart, hallowed, and you were justified, pronounced righteous by trusting in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit of our God. Yeah, the King James says, and such were some of you, but now you are washed. You are no more a homosexual. You are now a righteous man. Such were. So let's tell the homosexual what Christ has done. I'm sure once he begins to hear what Christ has done, he will live right. You know, I don't try to help God. I don't try to help God. I'm a preacher. I just tell people what God says I should tell them. And I leave it. I leave it. Because the gospel is the power. If I tell you what God said, I should tell you the power to help you do that which I have said is inherent in what God sent me to tell you. Say, I hear you. Say, I believe the word of God. Say it again, I believe the word of God. Say, it is final authority in my life. I didn't hear a powerful amen. You know, sometimes doing evangelism, some people think there are some sins heavier than Jesus' sacrifice. There is no selective sin. All sin is sin. And the gospel is the power of God. You know, Philip went down to Samaria, a city given to sorcery. A city given to what? Sorcery. Samaria. Because there was a sorcerer in that city called Simon the sorcerer. He was such a sorcerer that sorcery was attached to his name. Simon the sorcerer. What a title. And the Bible said he held the entire city spellbound such that everybody in that whole land from the greatest to the least looked up to him like some great man. So which means predominantly Samaria was a society sold out to sorcery. They were sold out to necromancers. They were sold out to soothsayers, diviners, sorcerers. So, there was a heavy presence of sorcery disguised as religion in Samaria. Acts chapter 9, I'm 8 verse 9 to 13, you will like it the way, the, 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 the way it's narrated. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched. So, when there is sorcery, there is bewitchment. And bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Next verse. To whom they all gave heed, all of them, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And you know, that's the dilemma with the church world today. The church world don't know how to decipher from sorcerers and men of God. We are not in the same boat. I'm not a sorcerer. There's a difference between a man of God and a magician. A man of God and a sorcerer. A consulter with strange spirits. But this man was so successful that everybody get heed from the least to the greatest. Saying that he was a great, a great power of God. Next verse. To whom they had regard. Because that of a long time. He had bewitched them with sorceries. For how long? A long time. Next verse. And, but when they believed Philip, 
preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. What was Philip preaching? Verse 5 of Acts chapter 8. See the message. That's why you've got to trust the word of God. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ. He didn't preach sorcery. He didn't preach divination. He preached Christ. It doesn't matter what people hold on to. Preach Christ. Christ sets free. Give Christ to the people. Let Christ do to them what only Christ can do. Give Christ to the people. Let Christ do to them what Christ is an expert in doing. Setting men free. Glory to God. He just preach Christ. Why? The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel of Christ. Paul got to a city called Lystra. In Acts chapter 14. In Lystra, they used to worship idols. Paul didn't preach idols. He preached Christ. Because the gospel of Christ is the power of God. Say with me everybody very loud. The gospel is the power of God. Say, I have faith in the gospel. It will set anybody free in spite of, irrespective of their condition. Give them the gospel. The gospel knows what to do. I didn't hear a good amen. Nothing like, they didn't go there to start doing mapping. They didn't go there to start doing calculation. They didn't go there to start doing all kinds of things that a lot of people do today in the name of deliverance. So the righteousness consciousness is a fundamental element of the gospel. The righteousness consciousness is a fundamental element of the gospel. We know God. You don't come into Christ and you're conscious of sin. When you come into Christ, you're conscious of the Father. You are conscious of Jesus. That's the gospel. You are not conscious of sin. You were conscious of sin before the gospel was preached to you. But when you receive the gospel, you are conscious about God. You are conscious about his son Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if any man in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The word behold is an instruction. Verse 18. And all things are of God. The new man, all things, things in the new man are of God. You need to regard the word of God Above your personal experiences. You need to value the word of God. Above your personal experiences. The Bible tells you that in Christ Jesus. You are a new creature. I challenge you to do this. If there is a habit before you got born again. You were struggling with. And that habit is still there. I challenge you to do something. And after you've done it for a while, tell me what happened. Take 2 Corinthians 5.17, meditate upon it and say it about yourself many times a day. Say it when you sense that habit is trying to come again. Say it when it's like you are being tempted. Take God's words on your lips and say it. Let your ears hear your mouth say what God said about you. Let your ears hear what your mouth say what God said about you. I'm a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are new. And all things are of God. Say it under pressure to sin. And you will see how your habits will change. Just say what God says about you. I'm saying you just fell into sin. Instead of getting up condemning yourself, just say what God says. 
Say it long enough and see how cheaply wrong habits break off from your mind. Just say what God says. I am what God says I am. I am the righteousness of God. I am empowered by God to live righteous. Say, the, say those things and realize that the epistles are the mirror of the believer. You didn't hear that. The Bible is not the mirror of the believer. The epistles are the mirror of the believer. So when you want to find out what you look like, go to the epistles. Because the epistles are the rightly divided word of God. The epistles are the rightly divided word of God. Glory to God. Colossians chapter 3 verse number 1. Colossians chapter 3 verse number 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Put that scripture on your lips. I am risen with Christ. I seek the things which are above, where Christ is seated, where I am also seated. My pursuits, my desires, my appetites are on things above. You become conscious of Christ. You become conscious of his word. You know, brother Paul got so renewed, he went to Corinth and said to them, Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have defrauded no man. Receive us. In that church, Paul was there when they killed Stephen. I mean, yeah, Stephen. He was there. He was part of the team. He was part of the team. Many people were widows and widowers and orphans by the hand of brother Paul. Years after he comes back to those churches, receive us. Our hands are clean from the blood of all men. We have wronged nobody. We have defrauded nobody. We have cheated nobody. The person that cheated you died on the way to Damascus. This is a brand new man. This man has no history. This man only has a future. I'm not hearing a powerful amen. Brother Paul was talking about his new consciousness. That is the consciousness of righteousness entered him so much that he couldn't see himself as that man any longer. There's a way righteousness will invade your consciousness that in the face of physical evidence, it is not you. You're not lying. You're just living up to your new identity. Say with me again, I am what the word says I am. I'm not hearing you. Let me hear you louder. I am what the word says I am. You can get so conscious of who you are in Christ that you cannot recollect so much details about your life before you got born again. The consciousness of Christ gets so much that it deletes the files that preoccupied your mind before now. So when those files are deleted, it becomes difficult for you to recall. You're so conscious. You get too conscious of what Jesus has done. Look at that Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 again. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Look at verse 2. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Next verse. I like that affection. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Oh, I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. Verse 4. Oh, glory to God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Look at the things you wear now. Set your affections on things above. You know the meaning of that? Walk in the spirit. It's the same thing. Set your affections on things above is the same as walk in the spirit. And you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. 
So every time someone reminds you of that person, tell the person, that person you're talking about is dead. He died long ago. I attended his burial ceremony. That old man has no ghost going around. I don't have a superstitious faith. I don't dream and see my old life playing now. No, I don't have a superstitious faith. I have the faith of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 22. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws. Put him off. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Created unto good works. Which God before ordained that we should walk in them. The more you say this about yourself more often, say it constantly, the old man is gone. The old man is gone. Not your father, the old man. <laughs> the time I have spent for the old man is enough. Now I live for Jesus forever. The time I have spent for the old man is enough. Now I live for Jesus forever. You want to learn? Give an offering. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Satan is goodbye. The old life is goodbye forever. Oh yes. Satan is goodbye. The old man is goodbye forever. The time I have spent for the old man is enough. Now I live for Jesus forever. Yeah. The old man is goodbye. Goodbye for good. The more you say this about yourself, the more you walk in the consciousness of your present reality. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified. I'm not going to be crucified. I'm already crucified with Christ. Keep saying that again and again. I have been crucified with Christ. The old man is gone. This is a new man. The man in Christ. He's a new creature. Imagine feeding yourself with this kind of stuff every day. Morning, afternoon, night. You speak these words to yourself. Satan will not have any room to run riot around you. In Romans chapter 6 verse 6, look at the way brother Paul will say to the church in Rome, knowing this, touch your neighbor, say no, no this, no this, no this, no this. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, we should not serve sin. When you come into Christ, you change your addictions. When you come into Christ, you change your addictions. Instead of disco weekend parties, you turn it to all night prayer. You change your addiction. You come to prayer meetings. If there's no church prayer meetings on that night, you pick one, two, three brothers who hang out with you. You book one of the houses. You close the door and, and katoma lakata through the night. Tell yourself, let's have Holy Ghost party tonight. Godly habits. Godly habits. When you are in Christ, you change your addictions, your passion, and your desires. See, we don't, we don't use the word techniques for a new creature. There are no techniques. New creatures have new desires. The desire of a new creature now is to pray. 
The desire of a new creature is to sit down on a series and do a personal boot camp. Personal boot camp. Uh, Papa taught in Christ realities in January. We've done revision, but there are some things I need to unpack. So for the next 10 days, I will spend eight hours listening to the word every day. Eight times 10, 80 hours of investment into the things of the spirit that produce eternal life. You make a personal boot camp and you just shut down, get your notebooks and pen. Begin to feast all by yourself. Have a party in the world. Now your desire is to evangelize. See, listen carefully. There is nothing that you need that is not in the word. There is nothing the believer needs that is not in the word. You know what? Brother Paul had Christians in the church at Corinth whose behaviors were like unbelievers. And he didn't cast out demons from them. He didn't tell them, so all of you are acting like Satan, right? Come, come for deliverance. No. He didn't cast out demons from those brethren at the church in Corinth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he rebuked them for divisions. Then he instructed them in the word. He rebuked, he instructed. That is how he cured division. He rebuked them, then he instructed them in the world. That is how he cured division. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, a brother took his father's wife. He took his father's wife. Brother Paul disciplined the brother and taught the world. And that is how that brother came out of that dilemma. He rebuked him and taught the world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, they were into a lot of argument taking themselves to court. Brother was suing brother and they were engaging lawyers and they were taking one another to court. Brethren in the same church. What did Paul do? He rebuked them by the word and gave them a lot of teaching. He said, know you not that you will judge angels? Know you not that you will judge the world? He's bringing to their reality, their consciousness, who they are. And he says, if you will judge angels, if you will judge the world, what are these little, little matters that you cannot resolve among yourselves? The most difficult brother to counsel or to settle a matter with is a brother who is in identity crisis. The most difficult brethren in church that will sit before me with a misunderstanding for me to resolve their matter. The, my greatest nightmare is for two brothers in identity crisis sitting before me. First of all, they waste the whole day. All of them are in the flesh. Those are the kind of people brother Paul will say, are you so carnal having begun in the spirit? Are you not perfected in the flesh? Because each of them is coming to prove right. As if this is not your brother. When we finally say, this is what we think the word of God. Look at it, look at it, look at it. They say, well, I will talk to my lawyer first. Your pastor is talking to you. You are calling lawyer. You, are, you have departed from the faith. You have departed from the faith. You have depart, you departed from the faith. So you are subjecting the word of God to the constitution of your country. So the constitution of your country is superior to the eternal word of God. So that is why you are not satisfied with what the word says about your condition. You believe that the lawyer and the constitution will give you more justice than God's word. We already know where you are. Because if you are truly risen with Christ, your affections will be on the things above. Ah. You are dead. You are dead. If you feel cheated, let it be. I was cheated so that my brother can be better. I esteem my brother better than myself. That's a love walk. That's 
say love walk. <laughs> Brother James says be careful so that you are not devoured by one another. So that you are not consumed by one another. Some of you are still keeping little, little malices. Little, little malices. With people you think either didn't treat you right or didn't behave right towards you. Where is that going to take you? Malicious. It's a shame for a man to be malicious. It's even a little like women. I say little. It's little like women to keep small malice before the sun go down. You didn't hear that. Before the sun go down. You know, be angry and see not. Let not the sun. So from morning, by the time you start seeing the sun going down, the matter should be over. How many times will my brother offend me in a day and I forgive him? 70 times 7. Before the sun go down. We see a man being malicious. A man. How does he look? Hmm. The wife will say, Darling, good morning. Hmm. <laughs> Carnality. <laughs> Brother Paul rebuked them. That church had a lot of cases. And the cases in Corinth are everywhere in the body of Christ. In chapter 7, he just said to them, avoid fornication. Then he says, to avoid this fornication, let every man have his own wife. That's all he taught on that subject. And he moved on. In chapter 8, he talked about food offered to idols. And he rebuked them and gave them the word as pertaining the things that are offered to idols. How that I will not let my knowledge cause my brother who does not have knowledge to stumble. He taught the word. He rebuked, he taught. He rebuked, he taught. In chapter 10, he did the same thing. In chapter 11, the same thing. In chapter 12 to 14, he dealt with the issues of the operation of the gifts of the spirit. He rebuked malpractices and taught what should be the order. There was no time brother Paul recommended a special prayer for a brother that was struggling with bad habits or struggling with a sinful behavior. There was no time he, he recommended a special prayer. He only rebuked and he taught the word. He taught the word and gave instructions. It's total ignorance to rob believers of who they are in Christ. It's like if someone, anyone tells you that the Holy Spirit <laughs> is in a bottle of oil. It's not just deceitful. But it robs you of your inheritance. Because the Holy Spirit is not in a bottle of oil. The Holy Spirit is in you. I will put my spirit within you. Not in a bottle. That olive oil is good for frying chicken. And I'm talking about the real olive oil. Not this one they are fabricating because of the commercialization of the church. Where they just package something that looks like oil, they put olive oil on top. Some of them, they even smell. So that I don't go and carry and start frying. I didn't recommend. The one I'm recommending, those who know it, know it. If someone tells you, you need special prayers from a sinful habit, he is taken away from you. What Jesus has done in you and what Jesus has done for you. You don't need a special prayer for bad habits. Change the habits. Change the habits. Starve that bad habit. Feed your spirit with your new habit from the word of God. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 tells us who have delivered us from the power of darkness. Who hath heart. So the believer has already been delivered from the power of darkness and has been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. 
So Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 1, see the way brother Paul dealt with a case of a brother overtaken in a fault. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. He didn't say if a brother be overtaken in a fault, let him go for deliverance. He said, ye who are spiritual, restore, not deliver. Restore. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 says, Galatians 5 13, all these are instructions. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love, serve one another. Look at that Galatians 5, 16 to 25. Glory. Glory. This I say then, walk in the spirit. These are instructions for the man that God has enabled. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Instructions. Galatians 5, 24 and 25. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lost. Next verse. If we live in the spirit. Actually the original is since we live in the spirit. Let us also walk in the spirit. All Paul did for brethren that had issues with sin. Issues with faults. Issues with habits and addictions. His issues with lifestyle that are not consistent with the word of God. All he kept doing in all the churches was he gave them the word. He gave them the word. He kept giving the word. There was no special deliverance. He got them to feed on the word. Feed on the word. Feed on the word. Feed on the word. Because ultimately, it is the word. It is the word. That frees you from entanglements. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 25 to 29. Look at instructions. Instructions. Wherefore putting away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Next verse. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Next verse. Neither give place to the devil. Next verse. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed. Instructions. Why? Because those instructions give expression to who we are. Those instructions give expression to who we are. Let not, let not, that means you can. When he says let not, it means you can. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. Walk in love. Walk in love as Christ hath loved us. Say with me very loud, I can walk in love. Very loud, I can walk in love. I have the ability to walk in love. I walk in love. You know, walking in love is not sweet. It's not sweet. Because walking in love is depriving myself. In esteeming my brother. It's not sweet. It's not. So you walk in love. Then brother Paul gave more instructions. Honor your father and your mother. Instructions. Honor your masters. Masters, treat your servants well. For we have a master in heaven. He gave instructions. Ephesians chapter 6, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
He gave instructions. Instructions. So these are instructions that you feed on. You feed on them. Listen carefully. Nobody can help you deal with sin. Nobody can help you deal with sin. No pastor can pray sin out of your life. No pastor can pray sin out of your life. You will need to feed on who you are in Christ. In order for sin to lose its influence around you. You will need to act on the word of God by yourself for yourself. You will need to stand up and act on what God says about you by yourself. Look at 2 Thessalonians 3.14. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Next verse. Yet, count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Instructions. Instructions. Look at the way Peter would give similar instructions. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5. Second Peter. Now, start from verse 4. I love verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world thereby, I mean, that is in the world through loss. And beside this, beside knowing that you are a partaker of his divine nature, beside knowing that you have escaped corruption, Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. Next verse. And to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience. Does that look like the fruit of the spirit? And to patience godliness. Next verse. And to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Next verse. For if these things be in you and abound. They make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the next verse. But he that lacketh these things or he that is behind in these things. Not that he lacks them but he has refused to act on them. He that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and for, has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. That he's still acting like an unbeliever. Next verse. We are for the rather. Brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. All that we are given in scripture to overcome sin are instructions. All that we have in scripture that overcome sin are instructions. First John chapter 5 verse 13 as a round up. Are you blessed tonight? First John 5 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that you may know Oh, hallelujah. That you may know that you have eternal life. The answer is to know. Epignosis. Accurate knowledge. That the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you because... You are in Christ. So, if I feed on the word long enough, bad desires will disappear. If I feed on the word of God long enough, all the stupid appetites die. They'll just die. Because when you starve those appetites, they have no option than to wither. Starve them. And the only way to starve bad appetites is to develop good appetites. 
develop good appetites and begin to feed those good appetites. And suddenly the bad appetites, you look for them, they are no longer there. Just replace that desire with a committed study of God's word. Amen? I said, Amen. What did the apostles do? What did Paul do? Paul gave the word and gave instructions. So, if I feed on the word, if I feed on the word, you are not hearing me. If I feed on the word, the word will influence my habits. If I feed on the word, the word will influence my habits. The word will influence my desires. The word will influence my pursuit. But don't expect magic. It's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be overnight. So, as you are feeding on the word and overcoming, if you stumble by any chance, get back on track and keep moving. Expect the supernatural power of God in his word. As you study his word and as you feed on who you are in Christ. So if I'm going to pray for somebody that has a sinful habit, what kind of prayer do I pray? Ephesians 1.16. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of your calling. That you may know what are the riches of his inheritance among the saints. That you may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. For this cause I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ unto, up, unto whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he will grant you to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Where? In the inner man. That Christ dwells in your hearts by faith. That you be rooted and grounded in love. So that you come to a place where you're filled with all the maximum load of God. What other prayer? Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Since the day we heard it, we do not cease to pray and to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We pray such prayers. And as you are praying, the brother's eyes open. Then he shifts his habits. Suddenly he's free. Glory to God. Are you blessed tonight? Say, I am what the word says I am. Say, I have what the word says I have. Say, I can do what the word says I can do. Say, the word says I am righteous. Exactly, I am righteous. The word says I am holy. I am holy. The word says sin shall not have dominion over me. Sin shall not have dominion over me. Well, stand on your feet and shout glory. I am what the word says I am. Feed your faith, starve your doubts. Feed on your identity in Christ and starve identity crisis. Feed on your realities in Christ and starve acting beside yourself. Yes, feed on it. I found your word. I ate them. And they are the joy and the rejoicing of my soul. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Wherewithal shall a man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I may not sin against God. Am I communicating at all? So house of Jacob come. And let us walk in the light. For he that walketh in the light. Has no occasion of stumbling. Lift your hands and begin to thank God for the light. Begin to thank God for his word. Begin to thank God for the food of the spirit. The revelation of God's word. Begin to thank God for the food of the spirit. The revelation of God's word. Begin to receive strength in your inner man. Begin to receive strength in your inner man. Lebro jacola tabala tata. Lebro jacola da babara kita na kalana makotuna kate adaha. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 
Go ahead and pray. Pray. Open your mouth. Pray. Hey, Bazo Baraka. Bazo Baraka. Hey, Bazo Baraka. Bazo Baraka. Elemota Baras. Lengro da Zobre Dada. Lengro Zabode Dede. Angala na Mambro nda Berekita Nakala da Baba. Jojo Kilana Mambra. Jojo Kalane Megele Boroko Tola Baha. Let me hear your believer's voice of victory as you declare what God has said about you. Let me hear your believer's voice of victory as you proclaim what God has said about you. Le grato menga la toba yadada. Ele majoke le ne mama malete balata naba. La grato bere kitana kaladaba. I set my affections on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. I am risen with Christ. I am risen with Christ. Angele rebo shakalada. My affections, my desires, my appetites are set on things above. Aleba dode. Aleba dode. Aleba dode. Angele rebo shakala. Agarato beleta babaya. Angele rebo sotolala. Le gran angele rebo sota. Rise higher and higher like an edifice. Ele mona shongala. Ele mona shongala. Ele mona shongala. Ele nema shongala. Oh, zebo rokoto le gedesh. Oh. Zebo rokotole de bababas. Hola mora de barakotele ne mama la na maloga daya. Angele de bosota. 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 Ayan ambre da gaga. The spirit of supplication. Angele de bosota da. Ayanana. 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 Ila mana 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 shekele rabas, ula mana reketina, ula nama raketena kela, jejo kele nama, engele boroka suta bala, engele ne mambro agala da babara ragatoba angarata 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 the spirit of supplication engele ne mo sotata engele ne mo sotata engele ne mo sotata engele ne mo sotata ale borosata ale borosota ya engele ne mo sonda engele ne mo sonda engele ne mo sonda engele ne mo sonda he that sobe to the spirit shall reap life everlasting engele ne mo sonda la ya engele ne mo sonda la ya engele ne mo sonda la ya Praise you, Father. Lift those hands and begin to praise and bless Him. 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 Begin to thank Him for what He has made out of you. Begin to thank Him for what He has made out of you. Oh, no, 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Zianos. Nianunu zangatos. Yando zobrika tombara katanakas. Ongo jakata latapaya. Broda sakayana. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. We walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. We are fruitful. We are fruitful. We are fruitful. We are fruitful unto every good work. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. 
which God before ordained that we should walk in them. We walk in them good works. We walk in them good works. We walk in them good works. In the name of Jesus. Sick bodies be healed. Barriers terminated. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Go ahead and celebrate the word of God tonight. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, hey, hey. Go ahead, go ahead. Shout with a voice of triumph. The voice of victory. your honor offering let's give tonight as we rejoice in the victory that is ours in Christ Jesus all of you online the banking details are scrolling television the banking details are scrolling social media the banking details are scrolling when we hear the word we give in faith we give in honor of what Christ has done for us hallelujah radio audience Mr. Michael Bush will read the accounts for you in a few minutes but lift up your offerings tonight, Father. We give in faith. We give with joy. Our hearts are totally saturated with understanding. And we rejoice that we have the opportunity to make a difference in the advancement of the gospel. So we give tonight in faith. And we rejoice that our offering is a sweet smell before you. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. All right, hit the music. Let's do it anywhere on the pulpit. Drop your offerings as we worship God before we join Ask the Council on now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven in me with weed. Stone power and love. Our God is an awesome. Everybody say, Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. An awesome God he raised from heaven in me with me. Stone power and love, our God is an awesome God. You say, Our God, our God. Counselor starts now.
Traditional opening announcements. Account name, Power City International. There are two binds. Let's start at the very top. Zenith, 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. That is for Zenith. Bank number two is UBA. 139, 26, 465. 139, 26, 465. Power City International remains the account name. Looks like our producer would allow us to take uh, some calls on this edition of the program, about uh, 10 minutes at least of calls, so plus 234. If you are calling from outside Nigeria, otherwise it's 0806 800 9939. You want to also do an SMS or two, the call line. The SMS line is plus 234 if you're SMSing from outside of Nigeria, otherwise simply 0703. 691-8642, or you send an email or two to ask the counselor now at gmail.com. For sponsorship, for partnership, and for support, just with a view to keeping the program on air for the global audience, just avail yourself of the hotline of the program. Again, if you are availing yourself from outside Nigeria, it's plus 234, otherwise it's 803 275 or you wire an email or two to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. My name is Michael Bush. My producer is Pastor I.J. Quere, complete with the production team. The main man is on set, our father, Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The intercontinental Mr. Bush. Global Baba, so nice to see you. It looks like the producer for Again, again. Global Baba. Oh, my Lord. Global Baba. Glory. Global Baba. Global Baba. Glory. Global Baba is testing the microphone. Testing the mic. Microphone. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Global Baba. The Intercontinental Mr. So nice Bush. To see you. So, so good nice. to see you. Man. Global Baba. Yeah, I tell so, you. So, uh, before we pray tonight, Global Baba. Yes. How do you pick your addresses? How, see how you look, Global Baba. You look like a billion dollars. The Intercontinental. Right? You too, I mean. <laughs> this man. <laughs> You're looking for trouble, right? No, Baba. Eh? Who dresses you up? Surely not you. You don't dress up yourself. This How should do be, you know? This should be <laughs> mama's work. <laughs> of course. You know that for sure. Global no, Baba. You know that so for nice sure. nice to see you. I'm too busy doing revelation knowledge Absolutely. to mind my clothing. Absolutely. But they make it easy for Especially me. Especially the color mixture and all of that. You know? oh, uh, 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 and you run things. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Global no, Baba. The Intercontinental. Bowlands. Woto, woto, woto. Go, <laughs> <laughs> let's pray and get this uh, special program oh off the goodness. ground. Oh, my goodness, let's pray together. Father, we rejoice that we always have this confidence that whatever we ask according to your will, you hear it us. So thank you for hearing us always. Pray for Nigeria. We pray for Kwaibom State. We pray for the rest of the world. We decree that our nations are taken over by the word of his grace and by the spirit of God. Veils are falling off. Men are running from religion. Men are running from darkness to the glorious light. And an army of people are rising all over the nations to preach the gospel of Christ. And we give you praise for the salvation of men. We speak peace over Nigeria. We speak peace over Akwaibom and the rest of the world. And we stop the devil in his tracks from overrunning our cities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Global Bar, let's go. Ask the counselor starts now. Uyo, that's where we spent the night. And that's, by the way, that's where we're broadcasting from 98 Wangiba Road in the heart of Uyo. Uyo itself is a state in the deep south of Nigeria, country on the west coast of Africa. And now, this one. Hello, Global Baba and the Intercontinental Mr. Bush. You're doing a great job, which has changed my life, my whole life positively. Global Baba, I have a question. Who created the lake of fire prosper in Uyo? Well, the lake of fire was created for Satan and his angels. That's what Jesus told us in the book of Matthew. So the lake of fire was not created for men. It was created for Satan by God as judgment, as judgment for Satan. But all those who decide to be in Satan's camp, where their father is, there they will be also. 
Okay, so Global, um, the, the challenge I have as the anchor of this program is that sometimes people send in anonymous text messages or anonymous um, emails without telling us where they're even writing from. So sometimes you have to just juxtapose them and make progress. So I have three anonymous entries. I'm going to take them in a jiffy. Hello, Global Baba. I'm confused. Why do you people not conduct baptism and Holy Communion? Order for the book, the communion table. There's a whole book on it, 350 pages, and then it deals with all that you're looking for. If you're very serious about knowing why, order for the book, the communion table. Hello, Global Baba. While teaching the other day, you mentioned, you mentioned the fruit of the Spirit as the product of the Spirit in the believer. We need not pray about it. However, among the Pauline prayers, we pray that we grow in love towards the brethren. How do we reconcile that? Well, growing in love is growing in the knowledge of that love that is already in you. It's not as if the love will grow, but the knowledge, the consciousness of it. That's what the prayer is about. Well, the next one, I, I hope it's not coming from, or it's not written from you. It's just, um, it's just an anonymous entry, and I'm going to read it anyhow. I, I hope and pray that it doesn't come even from Akwai Bombay. Here it goes, Global Baba. I've been married for a few years now. My husband denied our second child, few, a few weeks after his naming ceremony. And ever since then, he has treated the child badly. No okay, blue baba, no love, no provision at all. He doesn't even let me wear the child, the clothes and shoes that belong to our first child. This has been going on for a year. It was the child's grandparents that provided for the child. This led to physical abuse. Most times, blue baba I had to move out for my life and safety of a second child. We even did a DNA test, Global Baba, that proved positive. Still, the man rejects the child. He has even written a letter ending the marriage. Global Baba, what should I do going forward? Well, what you do going forward is put yourself together. If he doesn't want you, you can't force yourself on him so that he doesn't kill you. So put yourself together, you know, accept the divorce, and then put your life together. Stay in the word of God. You know what to do. Global Baba. Yeah. I thought he should have a round of applause. If you just stay with the word of God, you would know what to do. Yep. What an answer, Global Baba. Will you acquire boom states? So more and more entries from here. Hello, dear Global Baba and the Intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. I'm Moana Michael. I write from Uyo, Akwai Boom State. I'm 18 years of age, and Global Baba, I left with my parents. So I started following your preaching well-explained interpretation of the Bible in December of 2020. I really appreciate your work in the Lord. You have helped me so much with the true meaning of what has already been written. Thank you so much, Global Baba. My thinking towards the Bible has changed. Now I study my Bible more than before. I follow you every day, although I would have loved to be in discipleship school. I've been to Power City only three times. Back then, I did sneak out to attend. I do not like my church because there is no right interpretation of the Bible. My parents would not allow me to attend Power City International Church service, nor even house meetings with other brethren. I feel following you online on radio is not enough for me, as being physically with brethren will help me serve and evangelize. My parents really do not follow you. They do not like your preaching. They both do not even want to agree with me, but I keep praying for them. I'll be getting into university soon. I really, really do not like my church. I do not know what decision to take now. Please help me, Global Baba. Thank you. Well, stay in touch with us. Since you're going to school, it means you're going to be away from home. Once you're away from home, you can decide to attend Power City. So if you stay in touch with us, if we know where your school is or wherever you're going to go to school, we'll be able to advise you accordingly. But what you've done is the right thing. Don't disobey your parents. Just keep growing, keep learning. Thank God that we have radio, we have social media. You can keep feeding until such a time when you have the freedom to decide what is good for your life. Lord Baba, will stay on in Uyo. We stay on in New York, take some entries here from, even as I remind producer, Pastor I.J. Quere, that we should um, throw open the doors and the windows for callers to come in. Hello, Global Baba, please. I write from Uyo, Nigeria, and I like to be anonymous. And how much Global Baba, I like the way he spells his anonymous. The context, uh, Romans 8, verse 8, where it's about flesh equals to the nature of a man without Christ. Please, I want to know the context of flesh and body. In first, uh, 
I don't know, is that Corinthians uh, 6, 16, then Romans 8, 8, and Ephesians 5, 31. You do the homework. You read the pretext, post-text, see what the line of discourse is. Then you'll be able to know whether flesh there is a mind, mindset, the flesh, or the physical body. Because to be carnally minded, to be fleshly minded. So you need to do that study yourself. And uh, if after you've done the study, you still don't understand, shoot the mail again. Hello, the Intercontinental, Mr. Michael Bush, and our dear Global Baba. I appreciate the both of you for the good works you do in the body of Christ. I say, may God continue to bless you and reward you in Jesus' name. Please, uh, can you help me answer the both questions for me? It's not a both, it's under now. Yeah. One, is it true that God sometimes uses negative situations like sicknesses, adversities, etc., to draw us closer to himself so as to increase our desire to serve him? No, that question is funny. That means God is a criminal. He's such a criminal that he hides behind sickness and diseases, inflicts us with them in a bid to draw us close. That would be a very wicked, monstrous father. Can your father use Boko Haram to teach you some lesson by sending you to Borono State in their camp? No father will do that. If you that are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your father in heaven? God doesn't use those things to draw us to himself. Rather, he heals us of those things so that when we experience his goodness, we seek to know him more. Because it is goodness that leads to repentance. The global barber. The intercontinental. Okay, so he continues. It's anonymous still. He continues with question number two. He has a battery of questions, really. So he says now, number two, what does it mean for the Holy Spirit to convict a person of sin? And how does he do that? He convicts of sin through the preaching of the gospel. So we preach the gospel. And the Spirit of God, via the gospel, brings a man under conviction. Number three, based on 1 Corinthians 6, 18, why are other sins outside the body but sexual sin against the body? Because other sins, you don't use your body to commit them. Fornication, you use your mind, your soul, your physical body to carry it out. That's the difference. Other ones are thoughts. Other ones are reasonings and all of that. But fornication, your body is actually fully involved in that act. Number four, is suicide a sin? Suicide is a sin because it is selfishness. It's a sin because it is selfishness. You kill yourself at the expense of the benefit others will have gotten from you. However... Suicide doesn't take a man to hell. What takes a man to hell is the rejection of Christ. Samson committed suicide and murder at the same time. But today, Samson is an elder who, through faith, obtained good reports. Okay, Lubaba. It's been quite a while. We had a phone call or two on the program. A producer has made possible this one. Hi, many thanks for joining us. We know where you're calling from. Yeah, good evening. Welcome to the program. Mr. Bush. Yes. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. Bless you. Yeah. This is Sylvia Diovateka, calling from a quest. Okay. Uh, please, uh, I have just two, 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 three questions to ask. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, please, no, no, my first question is, what will you advise him and the proper for a man to marry a lady who is three years older than him? That is number one question. Then number two. And my, to my second question is, according to Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10 to 11, it talks about God giving gifts to men. Like gifts of, uh, gift of uh, giving gifts to men, the pastors, teachers. So, um, my question is, how can one discover his own age? That is number two question. Then number three, as the last. It talks uh, in First Corinthians chapter three verse fourteen. It said all was rejected by fire, and the last verse says the best himself will be tried by fire, yet by fire. So I want you to throw more light on that First Corinthians three verse fourteen. That last verse. 
All right, the first question I didn't hear very well, but I had the two questions. The second one was um, uh, the I last. Think, no, the first one question was about a man marrying a woman that is older. Okay, well, age is not a barrier in marriage. Marriage has to do with mental development, psychological development, emotional development, which now defines your stability. It's not biological age, it's maturity. If a young man is matured enough to marry a lady that is also matured or older than him, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Just like a young lady can marry a young man or a younger man or an older man can marry a younger lady, whichever way, or age mates. But the important thing is that maturity must be at par so that nobody is inferior to the other. The second question is on gifts to men. How do I discover my gift? You discover your gift, number one, by being born again, find a local church, get committed in a local church, grow in the knowledge of Christ, and begin to serve in the church. As you begin to serve in evangelism, in discipleship, as you continue growing, you will get to discover the areas where God uses you. The last okay. question. Was Ephesians 4, 10 to 11, something like that? Yeah. Last question. Yes. Ephesians 4 is what I just answered. Answered, okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry. First Corinthians. 3.14. What was the question? Oh, works burnt by fire. It's a figure of speech. It simply means that your works will be subjected to divine scrutiny, and if they are destroyed, you suffer loss. Just in time, Global Barber, for caller number two. Hello. Hello. Many thanks for joining us. We know where you're calling from. Go ahead. Hello, Global Baba. Good evening. Bless you. Good evening, Global Baba. I am Savior calling from Georgia. Savior, welcome. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Continental, Mr. Michael Bush. Many thanks. Uh, Global Baba, God bless you for your good work for the body of Christ. Thank you. I have been following you for the past years now, and I have seen that you've done well in the body of Christ. And Global, I want to make a suggestion. Here in this room, or in a quiet room, you know, we, we predominantly say our locals, they are listening to you in English. Yes, there are others that don't hear English. And I wanted to suggest if there can be a public to say whether your teaching can be interpreted in our dialogue so that a lot of people can benefit. Like the older women in the hinterland and the women in the English, they can benefit from your teaching. Thank you. Thank you, Global Baba. Thank you very much for that suggestion. Thank you. We've already been thinking about it with Intercontinental Mr. Bush. We've been thinking of how to get the messages translated into a Bibio. But like you know, uh, as it has to do with translation, when it has to do with vocabulary, the vocabulary in English is more than the vocabulary in Ibibio. So for us to translate English to Ibibio properly, including the way we teach the scriptures, we need somebody who is an authority in Ibibio. So we are still looking for somebody who really is an authority, who understands the language in and out to help us translate. So that we don't get somebody who doesn't understand it well, who will now go and make matters worse <laughs> for the people. So it's better not to than to do it bad. Lobo Baba. The Intercontinental. I feel bad now. No <laughs> Baba. The Intercontinental. So I'm not an authority in the Bible. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. I understand Lobo Baba. I understand Lobo Baba. Okay, so let's just get back before the... I think we can take just one last call, if it is possible to accommodate that. So, Lobo Baba, let's get back to that anonymous entry still from you here, Matthew. 528, does this mean it is a sin to admire or be attracted to the opposite sex when in search of a life partner, Global Baba? No, there's nothing wrong. If you're not attracted, then you don't even marry. It means you're not a normal person. <laughs> the reason why you get married is because of attraction. You get attracted, then you have desire. And then now you found somebody you feel you want to live your life with and serve the purpose of God. Then you take steps to make it happen. So attraction is critical 
in getting married because every day you wake up, that's the person you will see. And if you're not attracted, every morning you wake up, you'll be, you'll be angry. You'll say, oh God, I'm angry. Oh God, I'm angry. There's no need for anger. So make sure you're attracted. It's part of the requirements in identifying a life path. Okay, two more. Two more questions and we are done. First though, my last caller. Hello. Good evening, Global Baba. Good evening. Good evening, the Intercontinental, Mr. Bush. Many thanks for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? Johnny Arandi is my name, calling from Kenan City. Please, my question is, Global Baba, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22, Paul says to Timothy, lay hands suddenly on no man. Was he talking about laying hands to pray for the sick or ordaining people into offices, please? He was, talk he, was, he was talking about ordaining people into ministry, recognizing people publicly to serve in the body of Christ. That's what he was talking about. Healing the sick, you heal the sick, you lay hands all over the place. But when it comes to ordination or recognizing ministry, you've got to really know people before you, you know, before you announce them publicly. Okay, Global Baba, let's just quickly round off with this anonymous entry. Two more questions and we're done. This one, number six, will the Holy Spirit, Global Baba, depart from someone who keeps uh, falling into sin because of identity crisis? No, he will never leave nor forsake you. He has sealed you till the day of redemption. In fact, it is because he will not leave you that eventually you will come out of those conditions victoriously. Because the work of the Holy Spirit is to work on you, prepare you, package you, to present you to himself without spot or wrinkle. And the, the, the last one, the last one, Global Baba, why is it that some people don't feel bad or guilty after committing sin? Well, every genuine child of God, born of God, will feel bad for doing the wrong because that's not his natural inherit, uh, uh, habitation. But if anybody is sinning and is not feeling bad at all, nothing is moving, he needs to examine whether he's born again or not. Okay, Global Baba, I think we should just dash quickly to next door River State and um, spend the night. When we come back tomorrow, we'll continue there from glory. Thank you so much, Global Baba. I've been so blessed. I can't wait to get more insight, the spirit. My name is Frank Tam. I write from River State. My question is on 1 John 5, 16 to 17. Please, Global Baba, shed more light and uh, help my understanding. What are the sins that cannot be forgiven? And we shouldn't pray for someone in it, or in them it should be. Thank you, sir. Well, again, that scripture needs to be properly interpreted. I think I did exegesis on that scripture in Soteria season 5. But it's very easy to know sins that can be forgiven and sins that cannot be forgiven. Unforgettable, unforgivable sin is blasphemy or the rejection of Jesus. Okay, no more about this, some prayer requests. Just um, pray over them before we round off this edition. Let's, the program. let's pray together. Father, we pray for people in need who has reached out to us. We join faith with one another and we stand in faith with them that every need is met supernaturally. Sick bodies be healed. Satan, get your hands off of God's property and we command the healing power of God to flow in that body. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for signs, wonders, and testimonies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's the size of this edition of Ask the Counselor and indeed of the program. 30 Days of Glory 2022 continues tomorrow and we enjoy all of you around the world to join us. Until then, Michael Bush here, thanking producer, Pastor IJ Kwe and the production team and bringing on for the last time, our father, Global Baba, Dr. Abel, Damina, the Intercontinental Mr. Bush. Let's celebrate Mr. Bush. Let's celebrate Mr. Bush. All right, everybody, we want you to know we love you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. Remember, tomorrow, 6 p.m., GMT Plus One, we're live. You want to invite everybody to be part of that service. Remember, tomorrow, 12 noon, our teaching on tight and tighten continues. Tomorrow will be part four. You don't want to miss it for anything under the sun. It's on my, social, I mean, social, it's on my Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. It's very important. We love you and we thank you for always allowing us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. Till we see you again tomorrow, enjoy the grace of God and be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. Amen.